Welcome back to another Access VBA tutorial. Alrighty, so today we are going to be showing you how to take an Excel table and import it into Access while having both applications open using VBA. Now, first thing about this particular topic is there's actually many different ways to achieve this. Uh, you can actually do ODBC connections sometimes and some other options as well. So do not feel like this is the only avenue you have, but I do like to demonstrate it only because I think it keeps us grounded with the object models and we're not really going into the whole ODBC world, which can have its own little caveats that we have to be aware of. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so if you can't currently tell, I currently have my access database open for the world to see. And the goal is to take an Excel workbook. In this particular Excel workbook, I have, as it closes down, I have a single worksheet that I have named called database. And then I have a list object, also sometimes called Excel tables, on that particular worksheet. So on my database sheet, I have a list object that is called snake database. My goal is to import the entire content of this table into my access database and to create its own table with its own data types inside of here. So that is the goal of this particular tutorial is to take that table, import it in here by creating a table defining the fields and data types of that table, and then inserting each record into this particular table. So with that being said, let's jump back to our visual basic editor that we're also accustomed to seeing and start writing some code. So I'm going to go to my create tab this time. And then you'll notice over here on the right hand side, we have macros and code. I'm going to go to the visual basic icon. Then from here, I'm going to expand it. I did make the font a little bit bigger compared to the last video, so uh, that way everyone can clearly see it. But I apologize if I am moving around more than I usually do. That's simply because I need to make sure I see everything. So I'm gonna insert a new module. I'm gonna give my module name and I'm gonna call this import Excel table to access. I'm gonna create a new subroutine in my new module. Uh, the name of this particular subroutine, I mean, you can call it anything, but I will say uh, import data from Excel. Then from here, I'm going to declare my object variables. So I'm going to declare my variables. Now, before we declare our variables, because we are working in between different office applications and I want to leverage IntelliSense to help with code completion and write my code a little bit faster, I am going to enable a reference library. That reference library will allow us to leverage the Excel object model from inside of Microsoft Access. So I'm gonna to go to my tools button on my ribbon. I'm gonna go down to references. Now I already have the library enabled because I had to write the code and part of it, I had to enable it. Now, more than likely, you're not going to see it here at the top like I do. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to M for Microsoft. And you'll notice somewhere around here, because they are in alphabetical order, there's going to be the Excel object library 16.0. You just want to make sure there's a little check marks, sorry, a little check mark inside of that box. If there is a check mark, it means it's enabled. If it's not, then it means it's not enabled. So uh, make sure it's enabled. And then again, you might be on different versions of Excel. So if you're on 2013, it's 15, 2010, it's uh, 14. And I think that's pretty much all I know off the top of my head. So whatever version you're on, you just want to make sure it's enabled. Okay, then from here, let's declare um, our access variables. So I'm going to actually make this a little bit more specific. I'm going to say declare my access variables. Uh, this one will be called access app. This will be my application object. I'm going to also have a database inside of my application. So this will be a database object. I am then going to have a table inside of my database. So I'm going to also have an access table object. So I'm going to create a new table definition. Now we've talked about table definitions 
in the first video. And then from here, I'm also going to have fields inside of my table. So I'm also going to define my field object as well. And then finally, I'm planning to insert records into my, uh, sorry, what is it, into my table. So I'm gonna also have a record set object as well. So that is <clears throat> basically there for my access variables. And we're now gonna declare my Excel variables. This one, we're gonna have the Excel app. This will represent the Excel application, not the access application. I'm gonna also have a workbook inside of my Excel application. So I'm gonna also declare a workbook object. I'm gonna also have a sheet inside of my workbook. So I'm gonna also declare an Excel worksheet object. Now my particular worksheet has a list object on side of it, inside of it. So I'm gonna also declare another variable called Excel data table that will represent a list object that exists in that particular worksheet. And then I'm gonna be looping through the columns inside of that particular list object. So I'm gonna also create a data column object variable, and this will be a list column. And sorry, I need to make sure I have Excel list object, and then an Excel list column. I wanna make sure it's all Excel variables. And then finally, for the Excel object variables, I'm gonna have a row. Well, you kind of guessed it, this is gonna be a list row object, so a single row inside of my list object. And then finally, I'm gonna have a couple Boolean options as well. This is to make sure if I need to create the table, I have a flag to do so, and same with the field. So I'm gonna have a was found. This will represent a Boolean. I'm gonna also have field was found. This will also be a Boolean. I'm gonna give myself some space so I can make sure everyone can see everything. First things first, let's grab the access application. Then from here, I'm gonna set my access app equal to the application property that will return the access application. I'm gonna grab the database inside of my application. So I'm gonna set my access database object variable equal to my access object variable. And then I'm gonna to go to uh, current DB. I'm gonna to go to the current DB method. This returns the current database inside of my access database. Now, I'm gonna write my next line of code. Now, this assumes something very important. So I'm gonna set my Excel application and I'm gonna put, I am assuming the application is open. Why? Well, I'm gonna set my Excel app object variable. I'm gonna call my get object method. It's a built-in VB method. And I don't have a path name, but I do have a class name and it's the program ID for the Excel application. Guess what? It's Excel.application. I can use this method if the application is open because it's gonna grab the active instance of it. You could not use this method if the application was closed because it's gonna return an error. If it returns an error, you can get by it, but you're gonna to have to create a new instance. Now, I'm not gonna do that in this video only because I've covered it in multiple other videos on how to create a new instance of an application if it's not already open. So for just the sake of time, I'm gonna make sure I leave that portion out. Now, I'm also gonna make sure to walk you through some of the assumptions I'm making when I'm writing my code. So for example, grab the workbook. Well, that's simple enough, right? Yes, but I'm also assuming that the individual is in the workbook that they want to, you guessed, import the data from. So I'm gonna do the active workbook property that refers to the Excel workbook where your cursor is inside of it and you're selecting something usually. So I'm assuming that they wanna import it from that workbook. Additionally, I'm gonna grab the database worksheet, but this one I'm gonna be really explicit. I'm gonna be very explicit and I'm gonna say, hey, inside that workbook, I assume that you have a worksheet called database. 
<clears throat> now I do right here, but I shouldn't assume this if I was sharing this code with somebody else. I don't know if they're gonna have a sheet in there that's called database. So in some regard, you'd have to make this a little bit interactive probably, or you would have to assume that maybe there's some type of pattern that they're following and you could to use that pattern to infer which data they want to import. So again, different things you're gonna have to consider as you're writing your code, but you know, if this is something where you could use it yourself, then you know you don't obviously have to be as general. Okay, then from here, grab the snake database object. So I'm gonna set the Excel data table object equal to the Excel sheet object that contains a collection called list objects. And I can pass through the name of the list object that I want to select. In this case, it's also called database or maybe it's called, no, it's called snake database. Oh yeah, I was looking at the wrong line. My apologies, it's snake database. So this will grab that data table. And then from here, um, we're gonna start the process of actually creating the table definition. So I actually have a function in a previous video, the one where we talk about query definitions because one of the challenges with working with access sometimes is when you're working with a collection, if you try to grab an item from that collection that doesn't exist, then guess what? You get an error. But then if you try to create an item that already exists in the collection, you also get an error. So part of it is you have to check to see if that item is in the collection before you move forward in the process. Now I have a function that's generally written to make it where if it does exist, it returns true. If it doesn't exist, it returns false. So it basically just gives you a flag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna actually leverage that function in this example. I'm gonna gonna just show you another way of doing it. I'm not saying it's the ultimate way of doing it, just trying to add some variety, giving you some options about how you can approach this. I'm not gonna say it's the fastest, but it's an approach. And a lot of times, if you find yourself where speed isn't of the utmost importance, then in this situation, you would probably be fine. So I'm gonna say inside of my access database, as I can't spell, I know, there is a collection called table definitions. I'm gonna loop through that table definitions collection <clears throat> and I'm gonna check something. I'm going to check if the name already exists. <clears throat> so if access table dot name equals the Excel data table, if I can, if I can spell today, <clears throat> then I'm gonna do something. What am I gonna do? Well, if the name already exists, guess what? I don't need to create it because it's already there. So I'm just gonna simply grab the existing table definition from the collection. So if we found it, guess what? Then grab the table definition. Again, nothing hopefully super complicated or I'm hopefully not losing too many people. So I'm gonna do access import table. <clears throat> uh, what is this one? I'm gonna do, I think I didn't declare that one, but that's fine for right now. I'm gonna do table definitions and then I'm gonna do Excel data table and then dot name. So if it exists, then just simply grab it from the collection. Well, what if it doesn't exist? Well, then we're gonna have to create it. And then it can get a little, you know, a little bit complicated, but again, nothing, nothing hopefully super confusing at this point. So um, actually, no, with this one, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So I'm not gonna create it in this section. I'm gonna say, okay, debug print, and then I'm gonna say table space, and then I'm gonna do access import table dot name plus uh, was found. And then just for my simplicity aspect, I'm gonna put this here. I can't remember if I changed the name or not, but I'm just gonna put it there just to be a little bit safe. So let's just run it at this point just to see what happens. So that looks fine. So at least at this point, I can validate, I can loop through the collection. It seems like I'm able to identify it. There's another thing that I have to actually do here because technically at this point, 
um, I would want to put that flag that says uh, was created equals false. This will make a little bit more sense when we get to creating fields and stuff like that. But basically what this is going to do is if we don't need to create the table, then I don't need to go to the create field section. And then additionally, if I found it, I can just exit the for loop. So that's just, again, another way of checking to see if it exists and then, uh, you know, set the flag and stuff like that. And then exit the loop. Yeah, I'm putting a lot of notes here, but I'm assuming that you want to see the notes. OK, so I'm going to do that and then I'll just out dent this a little bit because I'm a little bit OCD today. <laughs> OK, so that assumes that it already exists. And that makes sense because right now it does exist. I'm going to delete it in a second and then we're going to recreate it. But <clears throat> um, uh, basically, this will at least check if it exists. So then from here, we're going to do another thing. So we're going to say if access import table is is nothing. So if we never set the variable because we never found it, then and if Okay, no, that didn't end then. Then what I'm gonna do, create a new table definition. Then from here, I'm gonna set the access import table equal to the access database. There is a create table definition method. I'm gonna pass through that name. It's gonna equal the Excel data table dot name. So I'm just going to always assume that they want it to match the same name that is on their database. There's again, things that you'd have to consider like, well, wait a minute, does the table already exist? What happens if it already exists and that name's being used somewhere else? So, you know, there's things you have to kind of consider, but you know, that's kind of outside the scope at this point. And then we'll say debug print because I just want some logs to kind of come out to me. And I'm going to say new table was created uh, the table name is and then access import table dot name and then here was created equals true if we didn't find it the table then create it okay <clears throat> And then comes the fun parts. So I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Now, let's put it like this. We only want to do the next section if we actually created the table because technically the next portion, it's not really necessary if it's already there. Um, let's do this. OK, actually, what I think I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut off the video because um, I'm going to probably rewrite a little bit of my code only because I want to make sure we're thinking about this logically and I don't want to lose people because we're going to be doing some stuff where we have to check with columns and fields, but really we should only be doing that if we're actually creating tables. So I'm going to rewrite a little bit of it just to make it hopefully what is considered more intuitive. That's the goal. <laughs> um, but I would say at this point, you know, if you have any questions just about the general process of checking if the table already exists, creating the table definition, uh, referencing any of the Excel objects or the access objects, at least the ones we've covered, then feel free to put that down in the comments below. Otherwise, in our next video, we're gonna go through the process of creating the fields and making sure that they match the data type of the actual data that's inside of the Excel table. Now. You got to be a little bit careful with that because you're, again, making a lot of assumptions, but I'll kind of talk through some things that you might want to consider when you're maybe modifying this code and trying to make it work with your own specific situation. So thank you again for watching. We will see you in video number two.